Hello and welcome to the Common Sense SEO Show for September. Yes, we seem to have dropped the number in and gone for the simplicity of months instead. I'm hoping we're live. Henrik, can you advise me if we are? We are, we are, we are. <laughs> and uh, let's just do the housekeeping. Can everybody see and hear us? Then give us a shout in the chat box. You know, it take ages to arrive, but we should have somebody on. The silence out there presumably means uh, yes, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay well anyway well but first of all apologies uh well if i if i may go don't, you don't forget anyway to, to to subscribe and do all those things and like us and all those wonderful things and throw your questions in today because we suddenly realized that uh, we promised a show in september and we're this is the last tuesday of september can you believe already so we thought we better jump on board today prepared or ill prepared um what have we got to say there's loads of things been going on in the last month um of the title maybe a bit a little bit sort of confusing what did i call it I, uh, what was it don't talk to me about sto oh and don't talk to me about baby. i've got a baby in the background and you might just hear sort of crying in a moment because i'm on daddy duty and she's just decided to wake up so anyway let's let's carry on and hope that uh, the show can move forward don't talk to me about seo what it was is over this month where henrik and i have been away been down all these wonderful rabbit holes and gone doing researching and trying lots and lots of different things you know there's sometimes when you sort of question whether all this actually works you know and you can see yes we've got sites that are ranking but trying to find a consistency across niches and across different things it's it's always um it's always a challenge shall we say and and sometimes you just look at it and go <laughs> Oh, dear, you know, I'm getting sick of this because the algorithm updates and everything else thrown at us to challenges and, and you know, and cause cause all sorts of mayhem in our daily lives. Oh, and clients, don't talk to me about clients. That's what I should have called the show. <laughs> Client, <laughs> clients, they're another thing, aren't they? Wonderful as they are, they pay the bills. Well, we'd be not, well, sort of. And, uh, but, you know, again, it, it's a lot of work keeping clients um happy unless of course you set expectations and really nail down sort of protocols and all the rest of it which we always try to do so really it was a bit of a a, a me rant just uh, sort of echoing some frustrations over the past month because you know although we've made major steps forward sometimes you just look at it and think well yeah we're, we're, the, these these secrets keep you know th there's still secrets to be on earth and there's still ever more to learn about seo it's a it's an ever evolving topic and uh we are you know firmly on the treadmill learning about it and and getting frustrated along the way sometimes uh, i'm gonna pass you back to henrik in a minute one of the other things we did do we did invite a couple of people on the show if uh, but unfortunately uh, adrian who was going to come along and give us some words of wisdom about local seo being as he's one of the men in the trenches unfortunately he had to be he got called away on a on a uh, on daddy duties i believe as well so um you know it's uh, so unfortunately it's you, you just henrik and i today without any guests unless somebody chooses to drop on over the next 10 minutes or so who knows let's see um henrik how what would you like to add to that um, random intro well um we have been playing around with uh, quite a few things um we've been well, I've been uh, playing with the um, backlink factory and stacking and um, had some interesting results. What I did was I took a Danish uh, domain. I took the English version of uh, the, um, the website and uh, I made a buffer document and then trying to ramp up some uh, backlink factory campaigns on that. And what happened was that I put up a tracker, I used AccuRanger and uh, set up um, a tracking for, for the UK, that's uh, so a google.co.uk. And um, it actually s gave, gave a lot of, uh, volatility, I would say, 
So uh, the visibility was uh, actually uh, just uh, like a continuing wave, but I managed to get some of the keywords that I was targeting uh, up in the page 10, oh, sorry, page 10, position 10, 11 or 12, um, coming from nowhere. And uh, that was quite interesting. So uh, I'll need to carry out some uh, more research in, in, in that respect because uh, um, I think that's, that was quite interesting that I could uh, influence the ranking in the UK for a Danish website's English version of it. Yeah, and that's using Backlink Factory. Do you want to just glance over quickly what, what that actually does? Because some people might not know of Backlink Factory or what it is. That wasn't a plug. I just thought <laughs> it was more for clarity than uh, promotion purposes, to be honest. Well, um, Backlink Factory is a tool which creates sheets, and you can stack those sheets into uh, different kind of folders. And uh, depending on how you structure your keywords and the, relate, uh, the related keyword, they call the primary and secondary keyword. Um, you will end up with a stack of of links, and that will um, reside in a folder, in a parent folder. And that parent folder you can embed in, for example, a, a G site. And that's uh, what makes the the fun about this. So what I did was I took certain part of the Danish website's UK version. And I built a G site and made inner pages to that G site, and then uh, I start building up the uh, the linking profile that I wanted, and then uh, embedded that into the G site, and that was what caused the the, uh, the things to, uh, to to rank. What I'll do is I think we'll take it up as a special topic uh, where we can go through how to use the backlinking factory. Um, because what I also did, uh, I had a stop on, on a stubborn uh, GMB, which was uh, a little bit tricky to move the needle on. So what I did was I initiated a stack on the, let me try to see what I can share that, just a second. So I took some live links and I took some of, of the links and um, took the, let's see, I hope everybody can see my, my screen now. So, so what I did, I simply took one of the late, this live uh, post in a stack. I right clicked it in my GMB poster and uh, I got the GMB site link for that. You can also click over here and get the, the, the normal link. And then I took that link together with uh, the map UL for that uh, particular GMB. And then I tried to set up a backlink factory campaign for that. I, I did a, what you call a modest uh, campaign. And um, what happened was that it started uh, to move. And uh, I took that output from that, uh, those sheets that I, uh, folders I created and put them into the ranking factory and created uh, a cloud stack on that. And then I took that cloud stack output and I use those as target for another backlink factory campaign. So I actually came out to another tier and on that tier I could be a little bit more aggressive than I have been on the first one. So by that I'm actually stacking the, the link structure and the further out I go the more aggressive I become in terms of my my, my linking. So uh, that's actually mooted first time. 
<laughs> uh, which you can expect if you you're hitting too hard. But then it came up and came up better than uh, it was. So we'll have to play around a little bit with that and see whether we can really push it up into the three pack, which is the objective. Yeah, because I mean, speaking, but, but speaking about the the three pack, uh, a lot of people are so focused on getting into the three pack. I think it's more important that you have a consistency in your posting and in your posting, you make sure that you silo whatever you are trying to post about. And that give more relevance to, to Google to digest. And what happens is that even though that you're not in the three pack, uh, you might turn up in a search with the knowledge panel. Because if you're looking at your GMB and you're not in a tree pack and you get the uh, impressions that you're getting, that doesn't correspond to 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 the say the amount on on searches on the maps. Uh, because uh, if you, if you look at that relationship or correlation between the map search and uh, and the uh, impressions. That's that can account for that many uh, impressions that you're getting. So th the basic thing is that you are getting more impressions than you ultimately believe, because you have been uh, consistent in your posting on the GMB, and that's especially applied to mobile. And, and I guess if people are coming to the search for maps, they're going to see something different. They're not going to see that three pack, are they? They're going to no. Um, they're, 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 they're going to see uh, just see the knowledge panel popping up, mm. and that's uh, they, they steal <laughs> the whole real estate. Exactly. So, yeah. and this is why yeah, been focused on that three pack isn't necessary because mobile users might easily be coming at it from maps rather than from the google search engine so uh, specifically um which is a different experience and and we, we know this because the, the, i mean one of our clients uh, he he it's i don't know whether that was a stubborn one you was talking about but we have got one client who did very very stubborn sort of it will in fairness it's not stubborn in some ways because it was non-existent when we first picked him up he, he wasn't in um the, the expanded maps back at all he, he just wasn't on the landscape uh, we got him up we got him up to i think it was about eighth and then it's been a lot a lot of work over the past couple of months to slowly 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 keep moving him up and he's now just below the three pack so it's, it's took sort of quite a lot of pushing and a lot of a lot of heavy artillery sort of thing to to to, to move it upwards but you know even though he's not appearing in that three pack all uh, consistently across the whole region he his his phone is he said he's busy and he has reported that that he is he's absolutely busy with work stacked out with work so you know, it's it's not the be all and end all. Although we convince ourselves that it is, and we use that sort of as a benchmark, as a bit of a barometer to our, to a success. But even being lurking just below, you know, if people are coming at it from the maps, then they're going to see those uh, pins, and they're going to they're going to engage with your business, as, especially if you do a bit of trickery and get your pins appearing all over the <laughs> all over the map. Uh, you got anything to say about that, Henrik? <laughs> yeah. Um... I did some posting, and that uh, took some. He's he's on the northern side of a big town, and then um, I said, "Okay, let's take the southern suburbs of that big town and start posting on that area and silo those," which I did. And for one of the terms, we're actually number two <laughs> in, in in the maps. Uh, so um, it show it, it works if if you do it uh, on a consistent basis and you silo the, the them things. So yeah, and the, the thing is, is the people that, that uh, are sort of refusing to move out of his way or are yielding one by one, but slowly, are businesses that have been up there with some serious, you know, sort of they've got some longevity, they've got they've got authority, they've got lots of things, you know, there um going for them they're not they're not fake sites they're not you know uh so you know it, it is a proper battle isn't it it's a proper honest seo battle yeah, it's, a, it's a very competitive industry uh, it, it, it is very competitive as well yeah but the people that are at the top are, have got there for, for for justifiable reasons and that's why they are strongly at the top uh but we'll we'll get there we'll keep going and we'll get there yeah. 
But it, if it doesn't, then we have to build a proper stack around it and then uh, let us go in and dominate that little area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one of the other things that um, we ventured upon, I mean, if anybody's got any questions, drop them in the in the chat there as well, and we'll come back to those. But one of the other things we've been looking at is also, I mean, if you if we go back a few episodes, we talked about speed, um, speed of websites. I mean, obviously not the uh, not the drug, but um, <laughs> well, sites. We could, we could take both. <laughs> <laughs> we could do, yeah. The therapeutic drug that was a word I was looking for. Recreational, no recreational. No, 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 no. Um, we're talking about site speed, and uh, we looked into it, didn't we? We did the. We had uh, we had Frank on from um, who did who does the. Um, or, What's it called? Auto optimize. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Auto optimize plugin. Uh, and we're getting the site, and then we're just looking at hosting, where we use like Cluster. And then you've been, Henrik, you've been uh, playing around with uh, launching WordPress sites on uh, uh, Lights. Is it Light Sale? Yeah. Yeah. And and maybe you want to talk about yeah on Amazon. You maybe want to talk about that in a minute, just how easy it really is, unless you're me. And then um, and and. But even so, there's the, even now we're getting sub sort of, you know, definitely sub two seconds, sometimes sub one second. We're getting user experiences by using all those tactics that we talked about a few months ago. If you didn't see those shows, just scroll back. You'll easily find them by the titles. Um, but, we, you know, we were implementing those things. We, we're definitely getting sort of one second, 1 1.2 second, things like that, even sub one second uh, load. We're getting user experience scores right up there in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, site speed up, definitely up in the 90s, 98%, stuff like that. Really, really good metrics using the combination of the fast hosting and the uh, and, and the auto optimized plugins and the uh, Java uh, was it async JavaScript as well. So all those tools all working really, really well. Pixel me, I think it's called the for doing your images, but I'm not again just any of those would do, I, I guess. But we haven't really looked at variations on that on, on image optimization. We've focused on you know on on, on the actual core plugins that uh, optimize the speed of WordPress itself. So, okay, so we, we, we looked around and we thought, well, look, we're getting all these crazy speeds. Can it even get better? Is it possible to get it any better? And then we came across a, a theme, which uh, uh, some of you will have heard of. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you search for these themes just as much as we do. And Socrates came to the fore. And Socrates has been around for several years. Uh, I think there's a link down in the description here of the show. It, it's been around for years. Uh, the guy looks like, I mean, it, it looks like a, a really good product. Um, he, he's optimized WordPress. He's stripped out all the clutter and all the overheads and everything else. He's, the things that are sort of necessary or likable by us, he's put them into a plugin so you can add them after the event if you want to. But the, the good thing about it is, and I'm going to let Henrik talk about it in a minute as well because he'll remember things that I've forgotten. The good thing about it is we've implemented on every site that we've implemented it on when we've been testing this this theme. It's very simple to use. Every single site we've implemented it on, we've got even better um, site metrics. The, the speed has always imp improved, uh, decreased. Um, the page, uh, the user experience has often gone from the or the speed, uh, the, the speed site speed. Sometimes it goes up a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't move because sometimes we're on ninety eight percent already. So where can it go really? Uh, ninety nine, one hundred, maybe not. Um, so so sometimes that's not fair because we're already most of our sites are optimized anyway. Uh, the but it does where there is room for improvement. It definitely gives us that improvement. And again, in the what's the other one? The user experience that the, the, the yep. GT metrics report on. You know, again, we were seeing using the um, the plugins that we've talked about. We was typically getting around a eight, eight, between eighty and ninety on the user experience scores, and that's pushing us into the nineties uh, in a lot of instances. So we've not had any. I mean, we've got all sorts of configurations. We don't have a set format for sites. We use different plugins depending on what the, the purpose of the site is. And I will hand on heart with all honesty say that it has not broken any of our sites that I'm aware of. It's We've turned it on. It's worked. It's not screwed up the format. It works with all the plugins we've got. It's very well behaved. Uh, and the great thing about it is I think it's 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 like forty nine dollars for an unlimited lifetime license. 
you know that's an agency license i think there's a caveat on the agency side i think if you if you've got to own the agency site if you sell if you pass the agency site over to your client then you've got to get them to buy a license which is only fair really but i mean 40 47 i think it's 47 dollars and for a very well behaved uh, and a very very fast theme uh unlimited so henrik what do you want to add about that well um what i did was i tried to make around with the uh, various team the uh, themes and we had one on which was a little bit uh, of a killer so let me try to show you one so it has a score of 44 and then when we installed the theme we came up to a score of 62 62 and that was on the mobile and on the um on the um, desktop it came from sorry here 88 to 98 so that was just installing the theme not doing anything else so it's uh, actually quite fast and um i, I think really that that was an eye opener for us that the, the more plugins the more uh the say needy greedy that you have in uh, in the theme the more expensive it is so um but and this theme has uh built in uh, short codes which you can uh, create you can uh, manipulate the um the, uh, the the sidebars you can have a membership uh, build on it because you can actually uh, show uh, the the content depending on whether you're logged in or not you're logged in so that that's uh, a membership plugin in the, in the same uh, sense that uh, it's it's a, um, yeah it's a fairly basic fun. membership yeah. isn't it but it's there yeah. nonetheless yeah yeah so quite good actually. ads ads it actually got all the ad widgets built in hasn't it for adwords um or adsense or whatever it's called yeah uh what else yeah it's 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 a, it's a neat little tool it it yeah it really is um i'm just trying to think if there's anything else there but it and you know yeah anyway give it a check the thing is is we we, we we're all i don't know uh, in my i've always tried to look for a theme that i can rely upon a theme that's easy to use um the last one i was using i forgot what it's called now but it was one that was um uh fast as well and pretty good but it always took so much setting up because you had to go the first thing you had to do was go in and pick a theme and then you had to install the theme then you had to in load in the demo content to get it to all configure correctly then to go and tweak some of the settings to make it work and even though that was a really good uh, recommended theme it was it was clatty whereas again, this theme is just easy so if you're just pumping out sites just ad hoc you know and you, you're doing a bit of affiliate and you're doing a bit of this that, and the other whatever it, it it makes sense just to have these tools in your arsenal you know if 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 they make your site faster then it, you can't go far wrong with it and and like i say it's a one-off one-off fee so we we're behind it at the moment aren't we henrik absolutely yeah, yeah. And, and you can go and sign up for a, a demo uh, on the website uh, where you can go in in the in the demo site and, and play around with the um, the different features of it so um, there's nothing to Let's see prohibit you or, or restrain you from from going in there so uh, and w while we're talking about speed i mean uh, can you cast any light on what you found when you was playing around with light speed uh, um, light speed no 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 light sail uh, with the with setting up wordpress because I, I know that's the thing that people talk about is like you know how do we set up a wordpress site on i know you're not prepared for this i'm really sorry but but if, if you do glance any light on light sail you know why why would people use it is it is it easy is it really that easy to use does it give you the benefits what what have you got to comment on that yeah uh i was actually um, chatting with uh, match from um, magic pr which is on here today hi match um and we were, we were talking about that, that i was sitting <laughs> setting up amazon sites uh, using the the uh, e2 elastic el 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 elastic computing and um, uh, dynamic ips and uh, fixed ips and then kind of pain in the neck and set up and uh, then he said, well, uh, there's this light sale 
So I went in and within three clicks, I had a site up and running. And um, it's a Bitami uh, install. And it's uh, quite easy to set up. The only um, the same nerdy thing is the DNS setup, but that's that's quite quite uh, quite easy to do as as well. So there's there's not no big hurdles in it, and uh, you get the first month free. And um, as I said, within three three click, <laughs> you have the website up and running, and uh, it's uh, extremely fast. And you you have the uh, the capacity of Amazon behind you, so um, we we'll definitely recommend that you try. And, and I, I presume they'll syndicate it across their probably do they syndicate it across their servers? Do they do they yeah, the do load balancing yeah. and stuff? Yeah. yeah. So it's got to be worth a look. Um, I think it was was it something like three dollars forty five for you for standard WordPress installation. Yeah, three three forty five for uh, per month for a standard WordPress site. Yeah, and what we're finding with Cluster, which is one of which was our go to before that, the, the one that's using all the Google DNS. I mean that, that that's running on average at about five dollars a month uh, per site. So the yeah. S three is definitely coming in cheaper i think the um ftp is probably a bit more of a hassle if you need to use ftp and because you've got to go in with ssh haven't you and uh, do you for ftp i think you do if you want to get in the back end of, a, of the wordpress yeah uh, but that's that shouldn't be necessary for for most of the people because uh, it's only if you clog it up yeah <laughs> yeah and to be fair i i i used to be always in FTP, but nowadays it's very rare that I go in to the back end of WordPress anyway. I think that they seem to resolve most of the problems that we used to have. No, no, no. Most have a C panel type where you can go in and have file menu and do whatever you need to do there. So, um, and there is a uh, there is a dashboard interface with the uh, light sale anyway, isn't there? So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. worth giving it a try. It's going to cost you nothing. Go and have a play. You can yeah. download your SSH keys and things like that as a CSV uh, yeah. if you need them. It, that, that, again, that's a, a, a good little tool to have in your arsenal, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got a little guest sneaking in here. Oh. <laughs> Terry oh. Power came on, and he might want to talk a little bit about his um, forthcoming venture, uh, being a speaker on the oh NFG Rockstar events. Hello. Is he there? Hello, Terry. He's Ooh, coming on now. Good afternoon to you, Tony. And, and, well, both of you, I guess, are afternoon and evening. I'm it's still morning, but yes. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming along, Terry. Thank, so, thank you. You guys are doing great, you know, yeah. pulling out these shows and uh, always have interesting content. And um, I don't always make them live, but I do, you know, download them so I can uh, watch them at my leisure. Well, we'll let you into a secret. We we haven't actually. This is the first one we've done in September, so you haven't missed anything there. So, uh, well, I know, but, but yeah. still had you have good content when when you do have them. And yeah, I, thank you very much. Believe me, I understand the rigors of trying to <laughs> have them on schedule because Google doesn't always bring out stuff on your schedule. Um, and and <laughs> change and some stuff. Obviously, you've got stuff going on in your lives as well. So um, you know, it's not always convenient to stick to a schedule it's much more convenient to thanks to the internet to just bring them out when you can and um it's more important to have good quality content than to bring them out regularly and have crap you know so <laughs> so anyway um terry i mean thank you very much for that that's uh, that's all it's always nice to hear massaging our egos there we go but it's <laughs> and you're you're the rising superstar because you, you seem to be getting these gigs at conferences all over the place now you seem to must have a busy uh, airport agenda <laughs> but, <laughs> so can you give us a bit of a sneak pre preview to sort of what's coming up on your uh, stage appearances well, um, you know, last year I spoke at Rockstars and you were talking about light sail. Um, that's what I talked about last year was hosting your sites on the clouds. And um, and people were like, oh, that's fast, you know, and stuff like that, because that was all about site speed mainly. And um, so this year I, I was talking to Mad yesterday and I felt uh, Thursday I got an email that completely derailed my presentation that I had prepared. 
Um, and I was like, well. Don't read emails. <laughs> heck with you. Um, so, yeah, a, you know, it's just like if you put all your eggs in a, in a Facebook basket or a um, Reddit or, you know, and, and they pull the rug out from under you, you know, you've got to step back and go, oh, let me reconfigure this. So I had my presentation prepared and then I got an email saying, oh, this program we've had for a while, we're discontinuing it next Thursday, the day of my presentation. And I'm like, well, great. That's going to make a lovely presentation to say, this is what I've been doing in the last year. And, but you can't do it after today. So get started quickly. But um, so instead I went back and I looked and I found a solution to circumvent their cancel or cancellation of um, an area. And uh, so I'm going to, start my presentation with that email and um, just a screenshot of the email and say, you know, sometimes you have to think outside the box and sometimes you have to think all the way around the box uh, to get there. But um, it's often worth it to use things in ways they're not intended. Uh, absolutely. Hey, uh, I, 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 well, I didn't, I listened to you on a webinar just the other day and it was the uh, conference pre show get together, wasn't it? N n nuggets dropping by uh, every five minutes, basically, because everybody had about five minutes to give their pitch. And it was like little snippets, wasn't it? Is that uh, video still, is that web webinar still available? Do you know? Yeah. In fact, I posted the video, the replay in my group, Facebook group and, and Skype. Um, and I can post it in the regular RF group. I mean, it's, um, yeah, they ask any of us speakers that could attend to come on and just give some tips and hacks. They didn't have to necessarily do anything, have anything to do with our presentation at Rockstars if we didn't want to, or they could. It was up to us. Just, you know, anything you want to talk about. So I, I mentioned a couple of things I've been checking into um, on some cloud properties. Um, Google's uh, in Google Cloud, their talent um, they have a talent section for job hunting. And if, if someone's looking for a job, Google's got a way to help them get, get out there. And I got to thinking, well, what if it's someone looking for a landscaper looking for a, so the landscaper is the one looking for the job. And if that's my client, can I use this Google talent, uh, section which has live uh, live uh, capabilities also um, and I'm still playing with that I'm not going to use it in the presentation f next week because uh, you know I fly out Sunday and I don't have time to have any data that I can back up you know uh, anecdotal maybe but that's not you know that's not going to get it yeah so. yeah and I mean, drop the if you've got the link, drop it in the in the chat here because then f for the few days that it'll still be live or whatever, then people can go and have a look, and then they might you know sort of see if that's if you're allowed to, of course. <laughs> it, was, it, it was honestly, it was a really good. Did you watch that, Henrik? Yeah, I did. Oh, well done. Yeah, it was. Kyle, it was a, Kyle had a great great one. Uh, Ted's was more theoretical. Um, yes, that is interesting. You know, it, it's three days. He says, you know, and he has the evidence. Um, you know, the first three days with a new site are critical with Google. Um, That's like he, he didn't tell us what to do. So right, right. I, I'm hoping to get that at Rockstars. The beauty of going to these these conferences isn't getting up and speaking because I already know what I'm talking about. You know, um, yeah. it's not new information to me. I like the, listening to the other speakers, but more importantly when there's no speaker and we're just sitting around talking yeah, last year yeah. at, at rock stars every morning I came down and had breakfast downstairs with Holly. And sometimes Ted joined us a couple times. Patrick joined us a couple times. Uh, Kyle joined us once or twice, but Holly and I having breakfast every morning, we learned a lot about each other's methods and we would talk about something and I'd, you know, and we'd, riff off of each other's you know she'd say this is what i'm gonna do da, da. and i'd be like oh i never thought of what if you added that to this and then you know i mean you get uh you know another perspective which is always good and you get you know put a couple different heads together and, and talk about stuff so uh 
those are those moments are you know worth attending a conference you know? there's, there's also the i mean if you speak in the other good thing is of course the authority that it that, that it brings from it because i, I know I've, I've done conferences in the past where you go there and then there's, there's these people that, that take photographs with you and them and then they, they they get shown around and suddenly oh look at him he's with that person or with that person and and suddenly everybody's authority merges into one and everybody starts you know it, it, it definitely is a a worthwhile thing to they are worthwhile to attend, definitely. If you're, as long are, as you're they're worthwhile world. to attend. They're worthwhile to be a speaker. One of the things, and I was telling my, my girlfriend this because she's over the weekend while I was redoing my presentation, um, she said, why do you have that in there? Because the, at the beginning and end of my presentation, it's bookmarked with my name, a URL, um, a uh, email address, you know, um, so they can get a hold of me because the attendees are going to get these slide stacks. Mm -hmm. You know, so they will have my contact information right there. Um, as well, anybody who buys the recordings in the past, they've offered the recordings every year. Um, I, I assume they're going to do that this year, but they never come out with that until you know, after the fact, because they'd rather you attend. But um, in my presentations, there's no sense looking at my slide stack if you haven't heard the presentation because I'm talking the 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 slides are just backup to explain but if you don't hear me talking you know just looking at those slides you're gonna go I don't understand what's going on here you know because I'm not gonna sit and read along with everybody watching mm. every line I think that's boring um, the slides are just there to enhance what I'm going to talk about, make it clearer. So, uh, Terry, 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 that's what many people do. They put in the whole text into a slide. And what that happens is that the audience will draw the attention away from you and your message and start reading. And then they go back, and then reading, and then they go back. So what you're doing is the perfect example of a presentation that uh, just a few, a few small images or topics, and then you'll be doing the talking, like Steve Jobs did. Yeah, yeah you can have a, um, you know, uh, uh, hit your points, you know, your major points up there, you know, yeah. like I'm going to talk about Google Cloud, and it says Google Cloud or something like that, and yada, yada, yada. And also there's, you know, Microsoft's Cloud has this, and it shows as you are, or that sort of thing. But yeah, I don't want them reading. I want them listening to me, getting the message, because with these presentations, you then have a question and answer period afterwards. So it helps if they've heard you. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. We used to call it death by PowerPoint. You know, those yeah. those long slides of text. <laughs> yeah. Every, mm -hmm. every single word. Um, the first speaking speaker is after dinner, you know, after lunch, those will kill you. you know? yeah. <laughs> Speaking about the cloud, Terry, have you been playing around with the, the Mega Stack? Yeah, yeah. In fact, that was one of the things Madge and I were talking about uh, the other day. I've been playing around with it a little bit, not as much as a lot of people, because the new Traffic Factory is out, and I've yeah. been using it for since the Traffic Factory before it was called that, um, and even been using it in the interim while a lot of people dropped off of it because indexing, you know, back in what March when indexing became really difficult. Um, and the new traffic factory is uh, even slicker. Um, it allows you to upload the, before you could upload to Amazon uh, to the S3 and you still can, but now you've got, I believe it's 19, 19 or 18 or 19 different, uh, Amazon you can upload to and of course like with the cloud stacker you could have buckets in each of those um, and you know just go to town just in the well it came out Sunday and what's this Tuesday and I've only put up about 200,000 pages maybe um, and, uh, and spam I have had other stuff to do in my defense. but um, yeah I love it I mean it's a uh, you know, build, build authority pages. Um, you know, it doesn't build websites, just pages. But uh, but that's okay. You know, it's pages with Amazon. It, the, the URLs are reconstructed reconstructed with this new uh, version. So mm -hmm. you're getting uh, domain authority from Amazon. 
and of course, is having your keyword as the uh, main part of the URL, the keyword yeah. URL, though. But and okay. the other thing, when you sort of uh, uh, kindly sort of announce the show in your group, you sort of said, "Oh, maybe Henrik and Tony will be talking about the Google Google Google, Google algo." Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's there's like masses there, isn't there, to work on? There's a, to all this all this data out there to sort of figure out what's going on. Of course, there's none. Uh, I, I went over and, and and our sites were sort of still sat where they were, so obviously nothing's kicking in yet. I, I tend not to worry too much about algorithm updates because they happen anyway. And it's it's funny that there was one when I was googling it. There was actually one pretty much a year ago as now anyway. You know, so they but they, you know it as long as you sort of follow certain protocols, your site should theoretically be safe anyway, shouldn't it? It's 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 when you start getting into tricks and stuff that probably you get penalized but uh, i've never really been drastically affected one way or the other by an algo update and i hope that it continues that way uh, i mean at the moment i think as ted would always say you've got to watch it unroll before we can get the intelligence to work out you know the intel i should say to work out what actually is going on and what actually is affected yeah and i think as long as you use good practices even if they're black hat practices um, as long as you're not doing something blatantly against the terms of service and flaunting it, and um, you know Google's updates aren't aren't out to get Henrik, aren't out to get Tony, or even Terry, um, you know they're they're for uh, much bigger purposes that have nothing to do with what you or I are doing. So um, I think if you do use good practices, good on page, your off page isn't you know blatantly uh black hat i don't think you have to worry about most of those updates hmm. did you did you get any um did you have any or did you experience that surge in um uh bot visits that happened sort of a couple of well over the last couple of months really not not on all my sites but on some yes yeah i've, I've noticed it on the news sites in particularly i mean news sites are just getting insane amount of visits you know i mean literally it's gone from the sites have gone from I don't know, like two, three hundred visits a day, up to over a thousand. You know, and it's when I look, it's it's all the bot. Yeah, I don't know if it's connected to the GMB. Um, the same idea with the all, new GMBs are getting scrutiny they never got before. Um, and I don't know if that's all part of Google's new thing of new sites deserve a better, thicker look, a harder look than you know existing sites. If that's the case, then good for those of us that have domains already. And, um, you know, so, uh, you know, that have some age on them um, because you can, you know, of course, build on those. And uh, and I think theoretically, even subdomains would not be given the scrutiny that on, on an existing domain that a new domain might. So mm, the only trouble with mine, I think the the, 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 the two that I noticed it on specifically, I think they're both on DigitalOcean. And of course, you get charged by. <laughs> by, by by usage don't you by the by the traffic and i'm thinking it's all well and good google paying all this all this my site all this lovely attention but you know me me hosting charges are going up with every visit you know it's just like yeah you know, well i presume they are anyway i, I don't I have I, to look at the cluster cam to see will it increase dramatically <laughs> well, yeah 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 i mean it's, it's crazy and and the thing is, is i've looked at it and i've analyzed it and that it's not doing anything i mean you, uh, apart from the fact that it's probably hitting my bandwidth it's not actually it's not had an impact one one way or the other on the ranking or any other metric i can't see well no sorry I, I, i'm wrong the metrics are actually slowly well this is moz metrics but they're slowly improving aren't they henrik they are going up you know every few days slowly 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 but but i can't see that that's necessarily related to that bot activity um but as far as rankings and everything else and other visits and 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 behavior on the site it's it's not it's not had any effect, so I, I can't quite get to the bottom of what's going on there, really. Um, I'm just hoping that they've realized that they're new sites and they're finally giving it the, um, you know, the authority that it deserves, and, and in which yeah, case it will be good. Started, maybe they are looking for fake news, and that's why you get all the, the visits. Well, they just have to go to the White House for that, don't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, 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 go and have a word with Donald Trump's uh, press yeah, agency. Tony, you yeah. can't go far with that because you've got boris johnson over there so you know. uh, yeah yeah well yeah and he's just gone and uh, got yeah he's just he's just gone and, what is it the, the law courts have just called him a, and should, today that's really um bless him um, we shouldn't mention him today because he just violated the law 
<laughs> and he's in America as well. He's visiting Donald at the moment, I believe. So, you know, it's uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's funny. There you go. You got to laugh, haven't you? Um, yeah. I'm glad I'm in Google and not politics. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else that we need to? Because um, we've gone, we've done, we've done three quarters of an hour now. So, I think that's a fairly healthy stretch. Is there any if questions and answers? He still has considering it. Go to, you know, NFG Rockstars, sign up and come to the conference. You will not regret it. It will. You can still get them, can you? can still get them. Investment. I'm sorry, Tony, what? You can still get there, can you? You can still get tickets? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. You could last night. I'm, you probably still can. It's it, it's definitely a good one. I mean, they've definitely got a. There's there's some real uh, characters there, and the uh, speaking. It's uh, it, it it does look like a really good event, uh, definitely. And last year's, I heard, you know, it, it covered some amazing topics. So yeah, it's I, it looks like one. And now it's joined up with rock stars, of course. It really does look like a go to conference. And uh, the speakers I've talked to about what they're going to talk about. Um, I'm looking forward to some exciting stuff lisa's going to be talking uh she spoke last year holly's going to be talking she didn't she wasn't a presenter last year but she did get up and uh, they have in the past i don't know that they will again but they'll have a time when anyone who wants to who has a great tip um they lined up i think there was maybe six or seven people and um we each got to do our own tip and they voted on the best one and they gave them a little crowd uh, again, uh, let me turn that off. I thought it was, it, I thought it was Henrik with the Smurfs there. <laughs> uh, uh, but they gave the uh, whoever was voting as having the best tip got a little prize. So, Tony, oh, don't awesome. You know. uh, don't laugh about the Smurfs. When I was living in Poland, I put up a Facebook page just for the fun of it, with uh, some Smurf readers in it, and I didn't touch it after that. But it has four thousand five hundred followers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not bad. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all good stuff. There you go. There's a there's a there's a golden nugget to take away. Yeah, there you go. Facebook Climb all over the suburbs. Facebook, you can uh, you know monetize those. So yeah. So have yeah. you got have we got any questions at all? Yeah, no, no. Uh, what's the drain says? A uh, lot of laughs. Clients, yeah, slowly moving away from that. Take up too much of my time, so where I could spending having fun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, there's this guy who always say, "Hey, people, uh, hey, mate, I'll match." <laughs> <laughs> and um, then David is asking best leaders in RFR for learning Google Stack building. Oh. David, the stacking I was talking about is not those. Uh, kind of stacking it's uh, more of the type of semantic mastery uh, kind of stacking which will definitely push uh, the needle for for what i'm trying to do i think so, terry should have an answer to that as well shouldn't, shouldn't you tell me about uh, have you done any you've done videos on stacking in rfr haven't you yeah yeah i've done some and uh as henrik was alluded to semantic mastery has some on youtube for that matter too um but yeah, and and you can, this is sort of a, not really a cheat, but you can go to like Fiverr, Legit, Conquer, one of those gig places, order yourself a stack inexpensively, and then you can see exactly what they're doing and go, oh, okay, I should have a Google drawing. I should have Google Sheets. I should have a Google site embedded with that stuff. I sh you know, you can uh, have your own pattern then um, if you want, or... Just go in the Skype groups and say, "Hey, I want to do a Google Stack. What's a good pattern?" And you know, three people will show will show up and say, "Here's here's the way I do it." Well, here's the way I do it. Um, you don't have to do it those ways. You don't have to do it the way Madge does, or myself does, or Tony does, or Henrik does. Um, but play around with it. You know, the idea is stacking, and whether you obviously at the top of your stack is a buffer page of some kind, whether that's a G side or not. Um, and beyond that, it's up to you to play with and find what works best for you. Because as we know, Google's algorithm is different for different niches, for different locations, for different. So, you know. it's it's funny that you mentioned Fiverr there because uh, I, I I took a look at is it Eric Lanchez or I don't know exactly how you pronounce his name. 
Uh, he's a fairly top SEO guy, um, and his content's good. It's accessible. It's very easily readable for you know everybody, really. I think. And he got asked the question: uh, Does stacking work? He says. So we decided to test it out. He says went off to Fiverr and bought a couple of gigs. And I, and I just thought, well, okay, thank you very much, but do I need to read any further? You know, because you, a great you, yeah. you can't you can't do a, a test on stacking by using a couple of five. <laughs> not really, can you? You know, over not if you're going to do it in all earnest. In, most yeah. of those you buy on Fiverr, and they're missing the the the, the secret sauce of the the stacks. So um, yeah, you can buy them. You can maybe push a little bit but uh put really pushing the needle is um requires a little bit more than yeah i think surf space were doing them as well weren't they i think yep. surf space do them and I, and I guess that they're pretty i mean these are the nfg guys as well aren't they the surf space guys but they so I, I guess they're pretty mean ones i don't know what sort of price i don't think that expensive but yeah to get your head around them that is a good strategy buy one and 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 tear it apart um, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. One concept in your head it's just a matter of applying it and like i said yeah. you can apply them in different different orders and just remember everything you make you can iframe into one of the other things you're making so yeah. um, and, and also remember that what you put in you get back so don't just fill it up with loads of sponge shit um if i'm allowed to say that on youtube sorry but you know there's a place for spun articles there's a there's a place for yeah whatever uh, but there's also there's also times when you need to give it a little bit better TLC just to get you know better rankings and things. And we're finding that, aren't we? That you know the the, the content it can can make the difference between a stack that really kills it and a stack that is dead, basically. Um, what any thoughts? Say, like maybe if you want to do a little bit of an investment, David, then go into the um, three webinars that Marco did for Patrick. Where you donated to the um, to the um, kids uh, charity, charity fund that he had, and uh, that gives you a good idea um, what's it about, and then um, you can, as Terry said, look your way into uh, find one which is uh, possible to re-engineer, and then start building out from there if you want to do it yourself. But again, if you can go to the uh, MGYB and buy one for one hundred dollars, and it actually get you up in the top of the ranking without doing any work, then you should consider whether it's worthwhile to <laughs> spending the time and um, and do it. It's of course good to know how they're building, and uh, and you can do it, but you shouldn't waste your time in your business, but on your business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good point. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's not the most exciting thing, is it? Building stacks, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I think we've probably. Oh, oh, well, yeah, any more questions? Finally, sorry. Uh, uh, Martin has seen. one. What are your thoughts about Internet Dominator by John uh, Limbocker? I don't know. 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 Do you know, Terry? I ain't got any thoughts on that one. I've, I've read some stuff about it, but I'm not don't have any personal experience, so you know I don't know. Um, do your do your due diligence, you know, and yep. if it's great, go for it. If it's lousy, don't. I mean, um, there's always going to be some things you're going to get into and find out later you wasted your time. There's going to be other things you get into and go, wow, wish I'd gotten into this earlier. And I can't tell you which are which for you, um, unfortunately. So. And sometimes you can listen to a, a webinar or something, and yeah, the, the things that you take away individually is it, completely. I mean, I've I've been at conferences and I've sort of said, "Wow, that was a real light bulb moment," and somebody next to me was like, "Well, I, I didn't notice that, but this bit was to me." Everybody takes different things out, and and sometimes you can do a course and you might think, "Well, this isn't really doing it," but there, there might be just one little nugget that could actually be worth mm -hmm. uh, the, the value of paying for that course in the first place. I, uh, I have to confess that sometimes we have to restrain ourselves not to go into different rabbit holes rather than saying, okay, we know that this works. So concentrate on that and then get the volume out there <laughs> rather than going from one uh, shiny, say, object. shiny object to another. Of course, it's good to know what's going on, but um, keep the focus, keep the focus. 
and, and it's, it's it's not necessarily the shiny object itself it's almost like the the shiny concept or strategy isn't it it's just like well this sounds really good you know and and even if there's not a wso attached to it it's uh it, it you know it, it, it's too easy to get distracted isn't it like i think the term i came out with earlier on is focus to fulfillment just 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 get there get something done get it knocked out whatever it is get to the end of it and then yeah. Some great out techniques out there but are they worth your time and effort to take the time to learn them um you know how much effort do you want to put into spending learning to pick your own transmission versus just sending it to someone who knows how to do it in the first place yeah. pay them and not have to waste 20 30 hours learning to do something that you could have paid somebody to do and you know got and be on earning your money uh doing what you already know how to do so and that's what i'm saying if you pay 150 dollars for a stack which you know will work is your time worth more than that then you go and buy it if it isn't then you can as uh, terry says <laughs> waste 20 hours to get it to work and then um, get frustrated rather than say okay i'll, I'll install this um, uh, stack and uh, just hit it with some backlink from uh, backlink factory or uh, from uh, RFR, whatever you you use as a backlinking tool. And so, yeah, I think it's quite easy, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, it's easy to get caught in the oh, I want to be able, I want to learn how to do this, but you know, is it worth learning how to do it? You know, I mean, yeah. so. Martin says that it's an app that uh, can be installed tr on three different devices. Uh, so he's starting a kind of a network which would be used to make searches for a keyword of the client and then go to the client. So oh, it's, a, okay. it's a mobile app that make uh, CTRs. Oh, okay. Okay. So we've just gone on a long rant for <laughs> completely down the wrong channel there. Um, I, you just got to be wary of anything. Well, what's the benefit? Because, okay, so you're talking about local clients there. You're talking about CTR. Then you're putting it on an app with people from all around the world. Where's the local relevancy there? Does it does it really help a, a, a locksmith in Grimsby to get a click from a, some, some, some guy out in, you know, San Diego or whatever? No. It, it, we don't know. We think probably not, but we don't know. No. And obviously not everybody works in local. You know, if you're working in affiliates or you've got, you know, paper leads or whatever maybe then it's more likely to matter but you know well, find a local high school and uh, all the young kids with a mobile get them on and then <laughs> let them do the CGR for a monthly fee yeah it, it does depend what you um, it does it, obviously it depends what your focus is but yeah. just be just just think it through where just be wary of those up to now most CTR things have tended to fall over under scrutiny uh this might be different but i would be rather it depends what you yeah depends what you're trying to achieve that's that's all i can say i guess okay terry yeah. thank you very much for dropping on i appreciate you having me on keep up the good work and um thank you i expect in a couple of weeks my next uh sunday webinar to have some good things i learned from rock stars that i'm you know uh able to to share so that'd be great and drop you drop you if you want to drop your link in in the chat there as well do that for your your group if that's open to non-rfr if because we do get non-rfr people watching if they want to engage with you then then drop a, a way that they can that'd be great i really appreciate you being here terry it's always a, a pleasure having your knowledge on the show so thanks very much be here you take care keep up the good work cool take okay. care thank you henrik do you want to say goodbye yeah, uh, thank you guys for being on the show today. And um, remember to like whatever you s feel uh, of our shows and subscribe to our channel because uh, we might pop up uh, unexpected. And um, if you haven't subscribed, you won't get those golden nuggets from us. Tony. Yep. Goodbye. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Take care of that.